All right, so <clears throat> the stage we're at so far with assignment seven in the demo is we came up with a sketch, we created line art. Let's see. We created line art ideally as a vector, but as long as it's high resolution line art, this is 10 inches by 10 inches by 350 pixels per inch. Uh, for the first time, I used a fixed weight brush. I used a blob brush that was a fixed weight. You can do that. You're kind of forced to do that if you don't have a pressure sensitive stylus and tablet. So by drawing that way, it gives it a uniformity, which I actually kind of like. And is different than my other illustrations. And then we just did basic coloring on it. So basic flat coloring, where for every local color, like the blood, the feathers, the feet, we filled that in with one flat color. But now we're dealing with some of the, the other variations, right? Like in those slides that you have access to, which I should probably bring up, which you'll find with the assignment sheet for assignment seven, the exhaustive explanation of digital color. So what else can we do besides flat color? Well, we can split it up into two tones, right? So here we have duotone color. This was my, there we go. This was my basic flat color. Let's put it up at full opacity. All right. And I just have gray as a background so you can see that anything white is something I've, it's actually a cream color, but it's something I've actually painted in. So those are my flats. What you can what you can do is put a base coat down. So anything cuz we wanted to fill in all the space, right? So I took my my flat color and I duplicated it and then I filled it all with white. So I have kind of a solid white. If I turned off the the outlines it looks like this. And this is a base coat that we can build on. And then on that base coat, you can also add an offset, which is a good thing to add for a spot illustration so it shows up on different backgrounds. So I just added a stroke and I added a drop shadow, you know, to kind of clean it up a little bit. Okay, but if we look at that, here, I'll just actually turn off the gray and that. So duotone color takes the flat color and then it brightens it up. So I'll keep the gray on so you can see. So this is a brighter version of our flat color. And then we can also do a darker version of our flat color. And so I just did this using levels, doing what's called a tone, adding blacks to all the colors, to all the flat colors, you know, in order to create this, and adding whites to all the flat colors, that creates tints to give you this, which are like pastels. Okay, then you can decide where you want the darks and where you want the lights. So I do that by erasing away from the whites or from the highlights, right? So, and as I erase away, it reveals the shadows. Now I've done this so far in a hard edged way, using an eraser with a really hard edge or using my uh, lasso and just cutting it out. And you can see all of those hard edges. So if you wanted to do a soft edge duotone, which we can see in this in the slides, that's what this is, soft edged. Let's see if I have other examples. Not really. This is soft edge here, soft edge duotone. What I can do is use an eraser to do the same thing, erasing away from the whites. But I can set an edge on that eraser that is softer, right? So I can take the hardness down to zero or just something less than 100%. 
And so now if I do that, and I'll show you on the blood. Here we go. If I do that, I can start to really control and get a soft transition from the lights to the darks. It's still duotone. And then I can build it up. I'm only at 25%, so I can build it up more slowly that way. And I'm not using a pressure sensitive stylus, so it's always going to be the same size that I'm using. But because it's soft edged, it blends a lot better. And then I can take the size down and I can make it like a lot darker in some areas, maybe in the middle of the, the blood. Now this starts to get to be a lot more like digital painting. It can really render form to use soft edge. So if we zoom in on Wonder Woman here, and this is this is kind of the the standard for digital coloring now in comic books. You start with flat color, but then you do duotone. And notice that she has no nose, right? here at all in the flat color because that requires something other than line art, right? She has nostrils, but no nose. So it's up to the colorist to really model that nose and the cheekbones and the, the um, collarbone and the tendons in the neck and, and all of that and the kneecaps, you know, all done with soft edge because they don't, they wouldn't make sense to have like strong outlines around those things. It would call too much attention to them. So soft edged is used almost entirely through here. The only places you, you have like a slight hint of hard edge is at the edge of some of these shadows to make uh, the gold on her outfit look reflective or on her bracelet. Right. Okay. So Wonder Woman's not done there yet because we can still add special effects to her that we'll get into, but you can see how soft edge duotone does a whole lot. So we might go back to those slides in a little bit. So soft edge duotone doesn't add extra colors, but it just gives us as many tones within that one color as possible. So I'm gonna make it a nice big brush now. I'm just gonna hit this edge. And now that blood looks a little bit deeper. I can also just do simple things like select it all, you know, with contiguous turned on or off. I'll turn it off. I'll turn it on so I can just do this one. And then I can do things like duplicate it, right? And then put a gradient overlay on it with a layer style. And that's a way of doing soft edge too. And I can play with the angle of that of that shadow. And I can even break it up with the different uh, blending modes, just like we would with the layer on its own. All right. So we have a lot of options, but I'm just adding black and white to an existing color. If I did something like this, then I'm starting to get into full spectrum color because I'm adding other colors into my local color. And that's not what duotone is. So there's all, all kinds of ways to play with it. Yeah, I think I actually want it kind of like that. There we go. So there's kind of more of a shadow on this side. And then I can set that whole copy just to darken, right? So you can, you can end up with lots of different layers. But yeah, I, I think I kind of like that. It simplifies it. Then what about all the other reds? What's another way I can mess with it? Well, if I go to my flat color layer, which is super important because that just helps you select everything really easily. Remember, it's like flatting. 
So that will just select all of my reds together. I can then duplicate that, and then I can do this. I can go to Filter, and I can blur it. So Gaussian blur quite a bit. It'll look like kind of a red mist, right? And then I can play with the levels. So it's just like compositing. It's why we do compositing first. And I can really brighten it up. Oh, and it's on pin light, so I need to change it to normal so you can see it. Right. And that Gaussian blur will give me, you know, a soft duotone as well. Now I don't necessarily want it there but I do want it to soften some of these hard edged transitions. Right. Now the problem with blurring something is it will go outside of the edge. So now I'm gonna hit contiguous and I'm gonna to go to my white fill base layer with the stroke turned off. So I can select all the outside and you see how it's kind of glowing pink and that then lets me easily delete so I keep the soft edge transitions inside right, rather than outside okay and then if they're too faint because they're pretty faint I can double them up you know command J until it's you know different toned oh and you see how the the little blur of, of red is affecting the the yellow a little bit, so that gives just, or the cream a little bit, gives just a little hint of a, of, of full spectrum, which is pleasing. And then I can merge all those copy layers together with Command E. Right. And then that al allows me to play with blending modes. So I spend a lot of time playing with coloring <laughs> digitally because there are just so many options. And then I can take an eraser, my soft edged eraser. Right, and erase some of this back so it's more subtle. And where I want the, the deeper red to come through. Just erase with that soft edged first. Yeah, so we're getting there. All right. Now you can keep playing with Duotone Soft Edge. Like I'll create a new little layer here. And with this droplet of blood coming from the head, you know, I can just draw in a highlight. So this will be a hard edge do a tone. And I can just drop in or paint once I've selected it with white. All right. But then I can see, oh, that's too strong. So I want a color. And whenever you're on the paintbrush, you can just use the, um, the option key if you're in Photoshop and steal a color. And then you can always mix it in your foreground mixer as well. And this is true in Photo P. And by putting it on its own layer, then I can do a, try a few things with it. Of course, I can move it. I can warp it. But I can also use Gaussian Blur and really control how soft edged it is. So that's with nothing. That's with something. 